first thing we're going to do is make some adjustments on the dyno and see if we can get close to peak RPM out of this thing. It, it should have been swinging it. So I'm going to open it up a bit more and see if we can get some higher numbers. Ready? Yep. Go ahead. Okay, because this is an inline six, we don't choke the bottom cylinder. So we still got one more test to see if that bottom cylinder might be running lean. So we're gonna go ahead and repeat that same thing without activating the choke. I'm just going to restrict a bit of the, the flow at the bottom here. Go ahead. All right, so we can see mist coming out of that center cylinder carburetor, so that's not really a good sign. Got to dig a bit deeper. So, so for now, what we're going to do is we're going to try our best just to ignore what's happening in that front, that center carburetor there. Uh, we noted that it did have some really, really old worn spark plugs on here, so we're going to go ahead and replace those, and we'll try it again. So some of you might be asking, well, why didn't you just replace the spark plugs to begin with? And that's because the customer came in and said he was only able to hit about 3000 RPM on the water. So we ran a compression test, we ran a spark chat to make sure everything was okay, put his old plugs back in because we wanted to verify if indeed what he was saying was, was true. And as, as far as the output of this particular engine is right now, he's hitting about 3000 RPM because we're not getting anywhere near the horsepower out of this thing that we should be getting. So we're gonna change out those spark plugs, run it again. So here's those spark plugs. Can we see them? Come on camera, figure it out, there we go. So you can see that the electrode is almost gone on, on one of them. And actually that's on, on two cylinders, they're almost gone, so we'll see if that's gonna help out. I don't think so. All right, just finished with the spark plugs, water's back on. Let's run it up and let's see if there's a difference. You probably heard my voice that I don't expect one. Oh, I see he doesn't have in-gear protection. <laughs> let's go. Sounds good, it's it's the same. We're making very close to the same amount of power. We're coming in under under 2,500 and that's typically the area we see a 115 in. This, this isn't gonna cut it. More tinkering, more figuring out. The spark plugs that we did pull out of there uh, do have rust on them, but we're not seeing the, corro uh, the, the result of water getting into the cylinders down at the bottom, we would usually have a white sludge coming out of there if water was still getting in. So I suspect that there was rust on the spark plugs due to improper winterization. Now, that might be a problem in itself if the cylinders were damaged. Now, I, I'm saying that because we are seeing out of that, you, know, you want to advance the throttle there. We are seeing that mist coming out of that carburetor, which probably means that we could have a reed problem or those rings on that cylinder aren't sealing properly. Oh, we got it on number, they're the top ones as well, where we've got that mist coming out. 
Yeah, so the reeds probably aren't sealing. We could have some fuel being shuffled uh, between the, the labyrinth seals on this. It, it, it seems to idle very well. We just, we're just not getting the top end out of it. Hmm. More digging, I guess. Okay, so why are we talking about reeds? Go ahead, ask. You were talking about reed plates. Yeah. You were saying the engine might not be fixable. Aren't reed plates fixable? So, yeah, that would mean the complete disassembly of the engine, and I don't know if the customer wants to really do that or not. So the reason we're going to see that that mist is coming out, or the smoke is coming out, uh, exhaust, for example, maybe that's what it is, is because the reed pedals are no longer sealing. So if they're not sealing here, then chances of them sealing when the engine is running at higher RPM is, is less. So the tensile strength of those reeds is probably gone and maybe that's limiting the amount of fuel that it's capable of pulling through for, for that, uh, that charge every time that piston moves up, right? So I, I know that we did flash the choke to throw more fuel at it, but we threw more fuel at it, but it's still not capable of pulling the air through because as the piston moves back down the cylinder, we're pushing air the opposite direction. In other words, we're pushing it out and we need everything to be pulling in. So I think that probably just due to the improper storage of this, we could have, well, we, I don't know if it would hurt the reeds really, probably the age of the reeds, but seeing the corrosion in those cylinders or on those, those spark plugs could lead me to believe that a portion of those cylinders or, or an area of the cylinders doesn't seal anymore so then we're going to get that air fuel charge as it burns slip past that piston and then stop the amount of air and fuel that's available or, or less than the amount of air and fuel that's available for that next charge that has to take place of the air and fuel that's being drawn in so you're thinking age of the motor and everything just kind of a little bit worn out and now it's getting a bunch of blow by and it's i think so yeah so i i think the the way to fix this unfortunately would be to tear it all down and rebuild it. and and rebuild it we know the timing's on we know we we know that everything outside of the engine is apparently working properly but we just can't see inside other than what those spark plugs are telling us and we know that there's something going on inside because of the the rust on them so Unfortunately, yeah, I gotta make a call and I've gotta run through all of this with the owner and say, hey, this is where we're at. What would you like to do? Fair enough. Yep, that's all for now.